Snowden is directed by Oliver Stone and stars Joseph Gordon-Levitt as Edward Snowden, the man who leaked classified documents to the press, letting America know that we were under surveillance. It's also the story of his relationship with Lindsay Mills, played by Shailene Woodley, as well as everything surrounding his eventual decision to leak those documents to the press. When it comes to any filmmaking, but especially Oliver Stone films, I try to check my personal beliefs at the door, because he's a filmmaker who's very much so attracted to politically charged material. So that can be harder because a lot of times his movies have messages. He really wants you to think the way he's thinking. But it's important with this film, and really all films, to judge the film on its merits of its filmmaking, its writing, its acting, its directing. Because really in 30 or 40 years, if my review of Snowden is being watched by somebody, are they going to care about today's modern times? No, they want to know if the movie's any good. So I'm going to talk about the movie. Oliver Stone does some very innovative things in this film with the camera. I really like the way this film looked. He shot it on a very new camera, the Alexa 65. This is a beautiful looking movie, very crisp, very clear. And it does its best to make a lot of technical jargon mainstream enough for audiences to appreciate. If you've never seen the documentary Citizen 4, which is the real life doc about these events, then this film is going to be more interesting to you. It's a story that's endlessly fascinating and it definitely has a subject that is also fascinating. But if you've seen Citizen Four, then some of these events are gonna feel a little more like old news to you. This is definitely a more mainstream attempt to make this film more accessible to your everyday audience member. Joseph Gordon-Levitt in this film is incredible. If you have seen that documentary, this is the visage of Edward Snowden. He sounds exactly like him. He looks as close to him as any Hollywood actor who's famous. He did a fantastic job in this movie. Shailene Woodley is also really good good. One of the best performances I've seen from her as Lindsay Mills. She had a very vulnerable, real sense to her. And this relationship between these two people really grounded the film in some form of humanity because you need that for this character. You can't just have it be about that integral moment where he leaked these documents and made that choice. Really, all the performances are amazing. Nicolas Cage shows up in this movie and he was a very entertaining presence. Technically, this is a very well-directed movie with great performances. But I saw this movie yesterday and I had to sleep on it because something about it was bugging me and I just couldn't pinpoint it. And it actually took me a while to come up with what my problem with this movie was. We have at the core of this film a protagonist that is endlessly fascinating, a story that is resonant and imperative to our times. But something about the movie is just unremarkable because a lot of it builds to one moment we know is coming when he eventually makes this decision. Everything else surrounding that is a bit conventional. Sometimes real life stories, no matter how compelling they may be or how important they may be, just don't translate to film very well. And a lot of that is due to the fact that Edward Snowden appears in this film to be a perfectly normal person who led a very abnormal life. And sometimes it's just not theatrically very compelling. But at the same time, it could have been a lot more interesting if Oliver Stone had trimmed this movie a little more carefully. It's a very long film, and sometimes the pacing drags as a result because he seems to have this intrinsic need to show you everything that you need to know about this man. And certain details just don't really translate that well to film because it's like, okay, I get it. He did that, he did that, he did that, he did that. But what I really want to know is what drove him to do this. And you do get those moments, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, the film as a whole just wasn't very entertaining. I appreciate the film on its technical merits and the fantastic performances, but as a whole overall film, I could never see myself rewatching this again, and I don't think it's going to have that timeless appeal that films like JFK, Platoon, Born on the Fourth of July had. Also, the film makes a choice near the end, a very ballsy choice. It's the kind of choice where you're like, that better work if you're gonna do that. And it kind of does, like it reveals something and you're like, okay, that's, okay, all right, I, I guess. In the end, if you're a huge Oliver Stone fan, you're going to appreciate certain parts of this movie. It's not one of his best films, it's not one of his worst, and unfortunately is not that great return to form that I was hoping it was going to be, but it's still a movie that is relevant enough and interesting enough for mainstream audiences that I think people will at least find some enjoyment in it. I'm gonna give Snowden a B minus. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to this Sunday because I'm gonna be starting a new review series leading up to Rings. I'm gonna talk about some of the other Ring films, including the first Japanese Ring, as well as the two American The Ring and The Ring 2 films. This Sunday, Ring. I'm looking forward to reviewing that. You guys are the best. Thank you so much as always for watching. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.